Hello everyone, Himea Sato here, and welcome to the second installment of my Actually Helpful Tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we'll be covering how to make an MAC processor. If you're new to setting up an ME network, or you haven't seen my first tutorial video on how to make one, make sure to click the link here on the top left corner of the screen. In order to meet the minimum requirements to make an MAC processor, you're going to need 141 iron, 83 gold, 12 sand, 28 certus quartz, 3 certus quartz dust, which you usually gather alongside certus quartz, 8 nether quartz, 1 diamond, 19 redstone, 1 wood, 2 sticks, and of course lots of coal so that you can run your machines. You're going to be using these materials to craft 20 assembler containment walls, 6 heat vents, and 1 pattern provider. Now keep in mind that these materials are for the absolute minimum size of an MAC processor, but you can make these larger and I do recommend doing the 4x4 size and so the materials I've listed you will probably want to triple. As you can see shown here, the MAC processor can be as long, as tall, or as wide as you like as long as each side is 3 blocks long. So what are the exact requirements in making an MAC processor? First to start off, all corner pieces must be the assembler containment walls. So if we put together the corner here, we can see that every corner side of the processor is a containment wall. The next step is to place the ME heat vents. The ME heat vents must be placed on the outside walls of every face of the processor. The next step is your ME pattern providers and if you want your processor to go faster, which I'll discuss in a moment, your ME crafting CPUs. Now generally you want to keep your crafting CPUs and your pattern providers at an equal amount, however this is purely for personal taste and you don't have to have any crafting CPUs at all. Now you can see before I place the last block, all of the containment walls are circular. As soon as I place the final block, all the containment walls will become lines indicating that I have completed the multi-block structure successfully. The only thing you have to do to connect your processor to your network is to make sure that it's touching any block that's part of your network or have a cable connected to it. So now that I have my MAC processor, I need to go about programming it so that I can add in different items for it to craft. The first step you'll need for this is to place an ME pattern encoder. The ME pattern encoder doesn't require any power, but it does require blank pattern disks. So how do you actually use the pattern encoder and program your processor? All you do is place the required materials into the encoder and you can see that it will show the desired output on the right. Once you have the output you desire, you hit encode and pull out the encoded pattern and place it within the MAC processor and you can see that now the blank pattern will turn into the recipe that you like. And now if you go to your access terminal and type in stone, because we've taught it how to create stone bricks, you now see an icon here that says craft. This is indicating that the network doesn't have any stone bricks, but you can instruct it to craft more. When you click on the craft button, you'll get the crafting display here, and you can set how many you want it to craft. Right now it's set to one, but you can increase the number by full stacks, by 10 amounts, or you can just manually type in a number that you like. So what are some more advanced steps I can take with external processing with my MAC processor? Here you can see I have two ME interfaces up on top of my pulverizer and my redstone furnace. In order to program the network to understand how to pulverize and smelt any items that you have in your network, you first have to manually tell it what it will make. Here I'll show you how to program the network to turn gold into gold ingots. First we'll need to get some gold dust. Now the reason we got this gold dust is because if you place gold ore in the encoder, by default it has no recipe. Obviously you can't just take gold ore and make it into pulverized gold, it has to run through the processor. So we take the pulverized gold and we manually put it on the right in order to tell the pattern that if it takes one gold ore and puts it through the adjacent inventory, two pulverized gold will be created. So we encode that pattern and we place it in the ME interface on top of the pulverizer. So now the network understands that gold ore can be turned into two gold dusts. 
And the final step in turning one gold ore into one gold ingot is programming from dust into the ingot. So what the hell are these crafting CPUs I was talking about earlier? Each crafting CPU that you place inside your MAC processor increases the number of items it can process per tick. If I click on the craft button and order a large number of stone bricks to be made, you can see that each set is made in about 20 per stack. Now this is because my MAC processor only has four CPU units in it. If I had placed more CPU units in it, it would have crafted those on much larger stacks per tick. I generally try and balance my crafting CPUs to an equal ratio of how many pattern encoders I have. This isn't necessary, and really you can have as many crafting CPUs as you like. So let's go through something a little more complex. Here I have the recipe to make an ME controller, and as you can see in order to make this we need to make a few other recipes first. So let's start off with a Fluix Crystal. We're going to need Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone. We'll start here by placing in the required ingredients, and now we have a Fluix Crystal. We'll go ahead and put this in the network so that it knows that. And the other one we need to create is the Advanced Processor. Now this one's a little complex because not only do we have to make it through a furnace, we also have to make it with a quartz cutting knife. So the first thing we want to program is the knife. Alright, two sticks, one iron ingot, and two quartz. We'll go ahead and put that on the network. And then let's go ahead and put in the sticks, some iron, and some of the quartz. We'll have the network go ahead and make that for us. Now remember, when you're using items that have durability and you're programming a recipe with them, you want them to be at full durability. If there's a green bar of any sort, then it can cause problems with the network because it will more than likely look for an item with that set durability and not uh, any kind of that item. So now we take the quartz cutting knife, some redstone, diamond, and some silicon, and now we have the advanced processor assembly. So let's go ahead and put that in there, and then we'll also give it the ingredients for that. So we'll have it make the assembly, and now we need to tell it that making this assembly will turn it into the hardened version through a furnace. So we're going to put that in first, so that we have that. We're going to run it through the furnace real quick. And now we have the final product, so we're going to tell it that the advanced processor assembly, when placed through an adjacent inventory, will create the advanced processor. So we're going to encode that, and place it on top of the furnace, so that it knows when placing it into the furnace, it will cook it and create that item that we want. So the last ingredient we need is some Fluix crystals. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the Certus here, and it should already know Fluix from earlier. And we need four of these, so I'm going to have it craft four. Now we're going to come back here, and here we just go ahead and place in all of those items that we just made. And now the controller pops up. Go ahead and put that in. And now you can see here that it knows how to make a Fluix crystal, a quartz cutting knife, the encoded pattern, and the controller and on the external processor, or the ME interface, depending on what you want to call it, it also knows how to make the advanced processor assembly. So if we come over here, we can go ahead and type in controller, and ask it to craft one. And it went ahead and it went through all the steps of making that, and now we have a controller in the network. Now the first one we made was because we already had the processor in there, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it to craft one more so we can watch it go through the furnace. And here you can see it already made it, it's already in the furnace, it goes back in, and by the time we even look back here, it's finished. You can change the direction of an ME interface by hitting it with a wrench. Buildcraft wrench or the quartz wrench added by Applied Energistics works. The arrow indicates that the ME interface will always place the items into that inventory it's facing towards. It also cuts off the ME network's connection to all devices that the arrow is pointing towards, so that you can have sub-networks pointing into your main one. 
A very helpful device in seeing what your network is crafting is an ME Crafting Monitor. What this does is it allows you to see what the network is crafting. If I go ahead and request it to make a controller, we can look at the terminal here and it will show that it's crafting one advanced processor in order to complete the controller. If you want to cancel a process, all you have to do is shift click and it will no longer craft the item. Sometimes when crafting an item, it will bug out and get stuck. I see this happen quite often and the only major fix I found is to either shift click the items that it's crafting and have it reassess what it needs to make, or to go to the controller and break it and simply replace it. And that cancels all the items in queue. The other thing to remember if your item is not being crafted when you make a request for it is that if your drives are full and it doesn't have any room to place in your inventory, it'll wait until room is made. Be sure to check your drive colors and make sure at least one of them is green, indicating that you do have space in your inventory. That's all on how to make and program an MAC processor. If you have any questions or would like to make a request on a future video for me to make, please leave a comment down below. For my next video I'll be going over some ME Network Advanced tools and covering how to use things like quantum bridge tunnels and spatial storage. If you enjoy my video, subscribe and make sure to check out my Twitter and Twitch as well. I'm just a pig with no legs. So now that we have the assembly programmed... No, we already have the assembly. <coughs> Ooh, I found... Now I found a quarry. And someone in it. Why did you take this here? Look at this. Free crafting turn. Look at all this stuff in here. Are you killing it? Yes. He hurts. Whack. Where'd he go? Let me at him. Let me at him. Take his stuff. <laughs> Give me your iron. Give me your iron. The core belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> what weapon does he have? Oh, he's power fist, doesn't he? No, oh, let's take a sword. It actually hurts. He has a team to join it. No, I have that too. Take the crafting too. terminal, it's fine. <laughs> I'll keep him distracted. I think he... Oh, I got the drive. I took his drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I didn't see his name. Oh, yes. What's his name? Must get closer and find out. Seven, seven. That guy. <laughs> High speed right. pursuit! <laughs> oh, we got him! Take his head! <laughs> yes! I got his head. <laughs> you killed him with a big willy, it says it on the server. <laughs> Seven Devon Slab was slain by Sather 16 using his big willy.